Marvel Crisis Protocol Roadmap Panel here at Mini Stravaganza 2023. Woo! I'm joined by all these fine folks from Atomic Mass Games. We're excited to talk to you all about what's coming up for Marvel Crisis Protocol, give you an in-depth look into some of the creation process behind these fabulous things, and take a little bit of a peer into the future of what's coming. Gentlemen, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Josh Colon. I am the art director. I hope we have audio. Do we have audio? We do? Okay, great. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was great. Okay, great. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. I mean, it was a perfect It was a perfect second introduction, and then you broke it. I got, yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> you were going so smooth. I know. Well, here Jeez, we go. Jeez, Josh. <sighs> we did it. We did it. All right. My name is Will Pagani. I'm the development manager. And I'm Marcus Segovia, and I am the sculpting director. And we still have audio. Beautiful. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right. It. So, fantastic. All right, so the overall kind of view for this is we're just going to dive right in and start taking a look at a bunch of the different things that are going to be coming up. We're going to be starting mostly chronologically, so as we go through these things, they're going to be stuff that's going to be releasing at the start of next year. Obviously, the biggest release for us at the end of the year is the updated Marvel Crisis Protocol core set, Earth's Mightiest, which we've been talking a lot about lately. We're going to kind of move past the end of this year, though, and we're going to dive right into what to expect starting in January and moving forward all the way through the spring of next year. We've got some cool card reveals, we've got some cool art stuff, we've got some looks at things that you have seen in progress before at Adepticon that are more done now. Mm -hmm. We also have a couple of things that you haven't seen yet mm -hmm. that should be pretty exciting as well. Mm -hmm. First big thing we want to talk about is going to be the next Rivals panel. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is one that I think Josh and Marco have lots to say about <laughs> because both of them were challenged in some really impressive and incredible ways. Uh, so Marco, yeah. tell us about how you made a waterfall. That Rivals panel. Honestly, it was actually a really awesome opportunity because I like we have Evan King that sculpts in our studio, and the guy's a beast. Shout out, mm -hmm. Shout out to mm -hmm. Evan King. Um, he's a beast mm -hmm. at terrain sculpting, modeling, everything. And so I got a chance to work with him on that one. And you know, entire time that I'm working on those two characters, he mm -hmm. just busts out <laughs> his entire beautiful terrain piece of that Rivals panel. How did he make it float? Yeah. So he yeah. So then he got creative using the rocks, the natural rocks that are under the waterfall behind the, mm -hmm. the diorama, and then that holds the miniatures up and all everything up mm -hmm. on that on like this pedestal and on the waterfall. The waterfalls yeah. are also like support structures. Yeah, well. it, he did such a great job of like making it look like it's floating, and I think yeah. it's just so cool. And I'm and it's a great piece to also then expand on it. So if you're making like a table or something, then you can like build around it on mm -hmm. top of it, and like it just really elevates the the piece a lot more. And then on top of that. Uh, the art that accompanies it was also a great compliment to mm -hmm. the piece. Yeah, we uh, um, basically since the the Weapon X one, mm -hmm. uh, you Dallas and myself, we really mm -hmm. talked about trying to figure out a way to tell a story with each travels mm -hmm. panel. I mean, you can you can take credit. You came in and you started yelling at Dallas <laughs> and myself <laughs> about how these things needed to be more than just a smattering of good art. They had to be incredible storytelling art. I mean, it's fine. Just. Just own it, Josh. Just to be, own it. Well, own it. To be fair, and this is the, the truth. Like, like I, I really needed the art to match up to the amazing work on the sculpts and the terrain. Like, I'm like, we need to take this to the next level. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, let's do a cohesive thing. So for this one, the the narrative is um, sort of the idea of Black Panther and Killmonger fighting for the throne. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so we we were showing that both with the binnies, with the terrain, and with the tactic cards. Um, and then we're basically playing off a kind of like a little what if, like who you know what happens with Killmonger wins. What happens if mm -hmm. uh, Black Panther wins? And I think that ended up even making it into the rules a little bit. It yeah. sure did. Yeah. It so sure did. I want to talk a little bit more about the sculpting <laughs> process because this is obviously one of our big pushes, right? You, not only do you have to sculpt the waterfall, figure out how it works in three dimensions. We had a lot of conversations about how do you make it work on the table because we want these things to be able, like you said, to be centerpieces for a thing. A waterfall is a crazy one, right? Yeah. Waterfalls, <laughs> typically <laughs> if you build a waterfall for a table, it's like it's on a corner. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not usually in the center. Mm -hmm. So we we created... You know, we had a lot of conversations, I know, between you, Dallas, Evan, and myself as we looked at this thing uh, about how, how much of the waterfall should be there. We wanted to make sure that it was completely finished, but also to give people the opportunity. You know, if you want this on your table, you're really going to dive in and do some hobby to it. Yeah. Yep. And yep. if you're interested to see how that works out, Dallas Kemp actually has his, I believe, his next hobby panel or the hobby panel he's working on, the Rivals panel. He's taken the waterfall yeah. that you guys made. And he's fully fleshed it out into this amazing it centerpiece so for good. his board. Ah, so he's good. going to talk about that process. He's going to say how it works. Uh, the waterfall does not have a size, but just assume that it is size five. <laughs> it's, it's very big. Like I, I don't very, think very anyone big. but like Hulk and She-Hulk are throwing a waterfall. Throwing the whole thing. <laughs> like, throwing an entire waterfall is a little nutsy. Um, 
And then, of course, integrating the characters in the base. So let's talk a little bit more about designing and developing the characters. So I know from my standpoint, the only work I really did was I said, <laughs> all right, we're doing these new versions. Uh, I want new Black Panther to have the Vibranium Spear to kind of evoke the idea that you know he's in the duel, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, play, we play with the different media formats that we've seen, and we've seen the waterfall fight so mm -hmm. many different places, yeah. right? From the mm -hmm. comics and everything else. And then the other big one was, you know, we wanted to make sure that Killmonger was different, identifiable. And so yeah. one of the really cool things that we got to work with Marvel on was actually utilizing elements from the Killmonger look that came out in the miniseries mm -hmm. from Killmonger, which yep. was obviously inspired by the movies as well. Um, and we just kind of got to dive in. So talk about, talk about the process that you had, like, figuring out how to make these characters look like they're dynamically fighting on top of a waterfall setting the scene. What are some of the thoughts that go into Yeah, that? I mean, like, going into, like, just principles of art, you know, I'm going to nerd out on this part of just focusing on silhouettes <laughs> and proportions and how that looks in terms of, like, how the complete piece and mm -hmm. making it presentable on the table. So, like, if I could see from afar, I, could, I should be able to note that that is Black Panther, that is mm -hmm. Killmonger. And so we wanted to make sure that that energy was reflective both in their stances and also the little features that we have, like the optional head mask in Kill, on Killmonger as well to really highlight this uh, this story that we're t mm -hmm. telling. Exactly. And then um, both complementing each other, like you said, adding the detail of the spear that mm -hmm. uh, that's in Black Panther's hand as well, and then also elevating them, pushing ourselves to make better sculpts and mm -hmm. really diving into all sorts of like foundational things like anatomy and also uh, spacing as well. And that really, I feel, is what that really emphasizes the, mm -hmm. s the journey that we have been on from the beginning, from our first Wakanda wave oh, yeah. until mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Which was the yeah. first wave. It was the I've first wave. It was the first, the first expansion, expansion first wave. Expansion. Yeah. Yeah. Outside, of, <coughs> outside of Hulk and MODOK, the Wakandas mm -hmm. were kind of first, mm -hmm. so it was fun to go back. Yeah. Um, yeah, once it's all put together and on there, I mean, obviously it's beautiful. We have some amazing photographer, Matt Furbishay, who is our super talented miniature photographer, along with Leia, uh, who works on editing and, and mm -hmm. kind of, like fixing up all the photos that he takes. Talk a little bit to us about the art, and then we'll dive into uh, taking a look at how the beautiful character art you did translates on the stat cards, because I know that's what folks are interested in, the story that leads to these characters' oh, rules. Because yeah. we also made it to please you, Josh. Oh my like, goodness, we it's <laughs> just a love fest back, back and forth. So yeah, so the notion, of course, is um, you've got the centerpiece card, which is uh, the Tropic Combat card, um, which uh, is we, I guess I could say it, like, in all the Rivals panels from Weapon X moving forward, we kind of want a centerpiece card that kind of has a snapshot of mm -hmm. what is happening in the, mm -hmm. it, you know, the, the, the character pack, right? Like the, the terrain and the two characters. Um, and so that's the sort of centerpiece, you know, uh, uh, piece for Black Panther Return. And then you've got what happens if uh, Black Panther wins, if Killmonger wins. And then we had a little idea that, like, well, you know, Black Panther, uh, what if Killmonger like wasn't super fair and he kind of cheated a little bit <laughs> and what it so he made uh, in the comics he makes a synthetic mm -hmm. heart-shaped herb mm -hmm. and so we're like well what if he uses his science knowledge to you know sort of give himself that edge um and those four cards ended up mm -hmm. telling a really cool story and i cool. think that uh, we're pretty proud of yeah, mm -hmm. and speaking of stories obviously the character design and the rules mm -hmm. development was also one of the big things um pagani walk us through a little bit about how those initial designs that got handed over got worked through uh, I know King T'Challa was a monster for a long time. <laughs> yes, he might have gone a little I too far in that initial design too, document. Yeah. He's still, he's very, still very, very good, good but uh, Threat 5. Threat 5, yes. And he's a much more aggressive version of Black mm -hmm. Panther, right? This is the, the fighty version. This is the, the guy that wants to be in the thick of things and isn't... Uh, whereas I think the original Black Panther certainly wasn't like ignoring his friends. Right? Mm -hmm. he, he helped out a lot. He gave them rerolls through his leadership and things like that. This version of the character is much more aggressive, wants to get in there himself. Yeah fight for himself, do those things, and push his, his entire uh, squad to do that. And he does have he does have his Royal Rebuke, obviously, which yes. kind of comes into it. He also gains power, similar to how Ghost Rider gains power, mm -hmm. when if his allies are damaged, which mm -hmm. kind of shows him stepping up as the protector of Wakanda. Yeah, he's I really on the like front those, line now. Yeah, I really like those but story yeah. elements that we were able to stick in there. And, and this is really like him leading Wakanda, yep. right, whereas the original Black Panther was a little bit more of a mix between that King of Wakanda mm -hmm. and then the Avenger Black Panther, right? right? Yeah. This is just yeah. Wakanda. Yeah. Yep. So, And then Killmonger, uh, and then, yeah. super <laughs> fun. Uh, also a Wakandan leader. Also a Wakandan leadership, because so. again, yes. as, yeah. and this, and, and funny enough, originally that leadership was Criminal Syndicate. Yeah. And yeah. then Josh came in and yelled at us all <laughs> about this story that he it's had like in mind. Yell, yeah, it was, right? it was. It was like, very, it was an impassioned plea, a demand. 
Yeah. Uh, he came in and we started talking about it, and then that translated into the design where we were like, well, if we really want this pack to be what mm -hmm. a what if either side won, mm -hmm. it became super important that you know Killmonger kind of represents if he wins, now mm -hmm. he's leading Wakanda. So. Right. Yeah. The, the leadership got a little bit of massaging, it transferred over, but now they are both optional Wakanda leaders, uh, mm -hmm. so that you can tell the story of your battle for the throne. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I guess we didn't show all the, oh, it's all the stats on the tactic cards, though. Oh, no, we didn't show all that. No. I'm excited. That's, mm -hmm. you, we got us, <laughs> marketing, we gotta marketing requires that we, we save, save some things. things. Some things. Yeah, yeah, just enjoy forward. the art. <laughs> just please yeah, enjoy yeah. the art for once. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for Josh. Yeah. Always yeah. enjoy the art, Josh. Mm. All right. Uh, so moving on from that yeah. pack, we have a couple of things that are that are also really exciting. Uh, also sculpted in large part by Evan, right? Oh, um, we have the Wakanda terrain yes. that's yes. coming. This is yes. some of my favorite terrain that we've ever done. It looks mm -hmm. stunning on the tabletop. Yeah. Um, who doesn't want big imposing panther statues? And uh, talk a little bit about the vibranium hauler because that's, yeah, that was I always love the chance when we get to make something completely unique to the Marvel Universe using yeah. inspiration. And that was definitely original concept within yeah. the Eternal Studio. And that was done by Evan King as well. I'm telling you, it's he's, just a beast. A, it's just a beast. he's just a beast. Yeah. And that was one of it, like, if not his first sculpt, actually, when he first started working here. Like, we, we had him, he was iterating designs. I still have that notepad of him I think that where I he was drawing sketches. I think that sketches. the vibranium truck was, like, the first thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And yeah. so he was referencing beetles and, like, all yeah. these, like, inspira yeah. natural inspirations to then create the design of the vibranium yeah. hauler. And, of course, like, we just went all in and mm -hmm. then he had him, like, be able to position the sides of the vehicle to lift up and you mm -hmm. can show all the vibranium like yeah, your you options about you how you do it. it you can have it closed yeah. so cool. you can have it open you can yeah. have canisters in you can have canisters out and that's really important because uh, one of the things that we're super excited about, mm -hmm. or Pagani is super yeah, excited about. Yeah, let's do it. But I, I, I think it's a we. We. No, I absolutely. We. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we've been talking about a lot and we're going <laughs> to talk about more in various panels going forward mm -hmm. is you know one of the big things we want to bring is a lot of different game experiences a lot of different opportunities uh, the terrain has always been an important part of Marvel Crisis Protocol because it's a weapon. It obviously it's, dictates it's how the flow of battle important. goes, who can move where. I can uh, do more for the we, rules. We can wanted to ratchet more. up the story elements <laughs> because we get yelled at about story a lot. And we so do. we have introduced one shot cards with these. So, Pagani, <gasps> yes. tell us yes. about the one shot yeah. cards. So, one shot cards are uh, cards that come inside of terrain packs. They are optional for gameplay. Mm -hmm. So, you certainly do not have to use these, but if you wish to use these, they can massively enhance the narrative inside of your mm -hmm. games. So we are showing two here. We have one for the Vibranium Hauler. We have one for a train pack that we skipped and haven't shown yet, but I'm sure we will go back. Uh, Maybe Anne already showed I it? I think Anne already showed it. I'm not it. sure. Oh, she has uh, not we'll shown go back. it. So we will go back to that in just a moment here. Uh, and what these are is these are cards that add essentially another way or another thing for players to do during a game yep. to interact with the battlefield, to interact with each other, to interact with these things. So the Vibranium Hauler, you have to collect the Vibranium mm -hmm. canisters. Mm -hmm. They've been scattered across the battlefield and put them back in the vibranium hauler because you don't like litter or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because there's vibranium. Like, you, gotta, you wanna take the truck with it. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, Look, I'm just saying I grew up in Texas and you don't litter. Oh, that's fair. So. And I mean, they, you shouldn't litter in general. That's I mean, just yes. a good rule. And they affect threat level? Do they, they, do, so they yeah. can affect yes. threat okay. level. Yeah. They can raise it up or down and that obviously so or happens nothing. or nothing. Or nothing. Yeah. Um, and they give you more objectives and things to do and mm -hmm. some of them get pretty wild. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Don't, this, uh, yeah. Uh, if you're looking for the most balanced this and is not, reasonable uh, games, no, this, this is may not always <laughs> this be is definitely for you. like narrative fun. Obviously, yes. we do our best work to make sure that nothing's completely course, broken or yes, that yes. the game is unplayable. But they do dramatically affect what's happening mm -hmm. on the table Absolutely. in a very exciting and fun way. Absolutely, uh, Absolutely. Uh, oh. and we have plans to go back and create one-shot mm -hmm. cards yeah. for things that have previously been released. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, all train going forward will also include one-shot cards now yep. as well. So this is an exciting new kind of adventure oh. that we have. I love yeah. um, that's going to go forward with that. But and we need to go back. No, she already went back. Anne's, Anne's got us covered. I can see what she's doing over there. Like, <laughs> watch her push all the buttons. In which case, pull all the levers. It's great. Uh, please carry on. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's move on from Wakanda. Let's let's do a quick teleport if we can. Ooh, and brilliant. jump all the way <laughs> to Xavier's mansion. Yeah. I see what you're doing. Yeah. He thinks he's so I, clever. I've got this going board. on. All I've been thinking about that for three months That's now. That's right. <laughs> We're ready to go. Um, Adepticon, we announced the oncoming uh, explosion of several new mutants for the X-Men. Mm -hmm. A lot of tried and true favorites, pe the ones people have been asking for for a long, long, long time. time. Uh, and it was finally, finally their moment to enter the battlefields of Marvel Crisis Protocol. So let's really quick, let's just talk a little bit about uh, Bishop and Nightcrawler. Tell us, Marco, about sculpting those. Tell us all oh, the things you did man. to Nightcrawler to add extra pieces and options to him. Yeah, because he's he got comes, all the options. Yeah, he's got options. He does come with an optional BAMF. 
like lettering onomatopoeia mm -hmm. that you can put wherever we learn from Deadpool and yeah. like some people like to have it on and some people like to have it off the miniature. You choose. So you choose. So we decided to keep that tradition mm -hmm. and just allowing people to customize their miniature that way and to either glue it anywhere they want or make it as just a set piece for something like photography, you know. Mm -hmm. And then also it comes with options. It comes with sword options, mm -hmm. like dual sword yep. options. So you can be the swashbuckler mm -hmm. or you can be the puncher. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he does appear like that in, in the comics and so we wanted to mm -hmm. pay homage to that by adding the swords. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, he's just a great piece. He was, I definitely believe that I was done by Joaquin Palacios. Or no, that was Mike Jones. Mike Jones! Our very Jones. own Mike Jones. And shout out! Yeah, shout out. Yes, shout out to uh, Talk Jones. a little bit about the evolution of the teleport. Because I know that the original concept oh, was bonkers yeah. crazy. And that you were like, was no. a lot of iterations. And yes. so walk us through really quickly kind of how that iterative <laughs> process works. Like, how do you guys start with a drawing in 2D and then figure out how to make it work and look good in three dimensions? Yeah, so we do our best to interpret it. So we do take inspirations from what other people are doing, translating effects mm -hmm. into 3D, which is one of the toughest, like, parts of sculpting is effects, is mm -hmm. like being able to translate what you see on like a comic panel or in a, mo or in a movie or an animated show and focusing on those shapes and then to be able to identify what it is from afar. Mm -hmm. um, the, so the problem is that then we make it and it's like, could be better. Sure. <laughs> it could be better. And we show it to you monsters mm -hmm. and yeah, you guys are like, it apart. This we don't know what it <laughs> takes to make it. We just know what we want. Yeah, That's and so and then we go through iterations. We go through different designs. It g passes hands, and then people mm -hmm. try their their own interpretations until finally, like, we come to a design that works best that mm -hmm. you can see. Because one of the things that we ran into is that a lot of the smoke was also a little too distracting, taking mm -hmm. away from Nightcrawler. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to take away from the yeah. characters. We want the effects to enhance the characters. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, like like iconically, you know, it's typically like a mushroom cloud. And I remember we sculpted it that way, yeah. and, we, and we had that. And then Dallas was like, "No, it really is taken away from the mini, you know, mm -hmm. from from the figure." And I got kind of mad. <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> "But it looks like this, right?" But uh, you know, honestly, I'll say it. And I'll say it in front of it. Dallas was right. <laughs> like, um, like, and really seriously, like, it ended we up have working. to remember we're making a miniature. I know. Yeah. You, I know. You can turn it around. I you know. Can see it from all be, be, directions. Because at one point, yeah, I mean, I don't want to get to whatever inside, <laughs> but at one point you couldn't see the back, you know, because of the of the mushroom. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. looks really good, and it came out great, and everyone did great. All right, let's you. let's. Let's give the people, I think, what, what, they they're, want. what they're hoping for and show, let's show Nightcrawler in all of his glory. Now, yes. again, remember, we're taking a look at stuff that's going to be coming out early next year. So we're looking at like January through March is kind of where we're at now. We're going to look a little bit further into the future in a second. But uh, we're just, it's mini extravaganza, so all the gifts are getting opened early. Because that's what yeah. we do here. We don't wait. We don't wait for a release day. We tear them open on Mini Stravaganza Eve. I'm just saying, Christmas Eve is present opening. Uh, yeah. Is it? You're yeah. a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So Nightcrawler. Um, this, this was guy. a collaboration of like 20 different people in the office. Mm -hmm. Josh had a version. I made a version of that. The developers, you, and everyone else had had feelings and thoughts. Uh, he is a conglomeration of a mm -hmm. lot of different ideas. He turned out great. Talk to us about the process. Uh, well, I mean, you kind of just. Did I? Said the process. No, because... We all, so we, we take all these designs, right? And we have ideas from every different person. And I remember when the first time we ever talked about Nightcrawler, mm -hmm. uh, Nightcrawler was not being made. No. But, but we, we had the experiment of how would you do teleportation Correct. in yeah. MCP? Right? Mm -hmm. And then if you were familiar with magic, yep. <laughs> magic had the original Nightcrawler teleport she rule. Did. So that's, like, that's how far back... That's literally... Yeah. Right? We, we designed that rule Nightcrawler. for Nightcrawler. Yep. So, I mean, I don't know. When did magic come out? Like a year and a half ago? Oh, a while long, ago, yeah. Like a Forever long, in our like, minds. Came out <laughs> so like two years before that. So that's how long we've been talking about Nightcrawler, right? And Josh loves Nightcrawler. I do. This is one of his favorite characters. Like and most we have people. to get Nightcrawler right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we take all these different designs and all these different ideas and options and things like that. And then we start smushing them together. And we kind of say, hey, I really like this part of this one. Mm -hmm. I really like this part of this one. This is a very iconic character. What makes what? What is the important parts of this, right? And you take all those things and you put them together. And you have to make a functional character, which is where the hard yep. part comes yep. in. Because mm -hmm. if you just take all the cool things, sometimes they can't move, for example, yeah. or something. But well, this guy, I think... I was going to say, in this case, he the Brimstone Blitz was yes. kind of where all of the testing went. Yes. So, uh, Nightcrawler teleports everywhere. Yeah. He stabs people as he teleports. Mm -hmm. That's super important <laughs> to get. So, he had to constantly be placing himself yep. as part of the design, right? He has to move yeah. around always. He has to Very always be agile, moving around. Yeah. And then, how can we build in that like surprise factor of him appearing somewhere and stabbing mm -hmm. and then disappearing and that kind of stuff. So like how can we build that into mm -hmm. what the character does? Mm -hmm. uh, and Brimstone Blitz I think is the the like where we That plus puff of smoke so. gets a really crazy 
You can yeah. have crazy moments where you teleport yeah. like almost ten times <laughs> yes. around yeah, the I guy mean, that you just yeah! punch. <laughs> uh, if you hit Yahtzee, and it's it's a cool it's a cool it's, visual. Yeah, it, um, yeah, and and I feel like the player really gets to experience the like placing the yeah, nightcrawler really cool. around yeah, the table yeah. as he attacks and stuff, mm -hmm. and like you get to see that mm -hmm. unfold in front of you as you play the character. Yeah, it's, it's I a, love how he came. It's the idea, and then the comic so. sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, he exerts himself and he mm -hmm. teleports, and then like, he tires mm -hmm. himself out. Mm -hmm. Right, that's mm -hmm. the idea. And, and then also mass transit here is another way that he. Oh yeah, when we, but before we leave this. that, I just want to oh. take a moment because uh, I would be remiss. We kind of jumped ahead. We're very excited, but I just want to I want to make sure because we can only fit four people on this panel. Unfortunately, that meant that uh, Jesse, our graphic design manager, yes. was not able to attend. Shout out. Um, Shout but out to I Jesse. don't think that they were necessarily sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot to do. Well. They, they have a lot, to, have a lot, to, lot to, do, to do, and not everyone loves being in front of the camera. Sure. Um, but I want to give a huge shout out to them and Bree because the new packaging design, oh, everything, so the cards, yeah. Chef's um, just it's, incredible. it's all been a labor of love from them. Um, Jesse obviously worked on the original core set with us way mm -hmm. back at the start of Many the moves. studio um, <laughs> and eventually joined our team. And uh, so it's been really fun. And I talked about this a bit at Gen Con, but just as we see the new packaging, you see the new cards, like all of that <clears throat> is their creation and they've done a, an amazing job. Like yep. the product just looks so much greater than it used to. Um, because we're just at a new level of best, and, it and it's great all them. Before, it did, right? As I always like, say, as I always say, yeah. just because you're better than your previous best doesn't make your previous best bad. <laughs> bad. Yep, Unless you're Marco, right. in which case then he'll just tell you <laughs> it's always bad. <laughs> Everything is bad. 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 The second that something releases, Marco's like, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I can do better next time. True. Uh, <laughs> learn how to kill your babies. <laughs> all right, let's talk a little bit oh, about the tactic my. cards art, mass <laughs> transit, as Pagani brought up. Yes. Uh, crazy. Yeah, we we knew. I mean, so obviously we wanted to put in like important sort of things from Nightcrawler and uh, Bishop from the comics and their tactic cards. And obviously the first thing we thought of was like, well, Nightcrawler is gonna need some way to teleport more people than just himself. Like that was mm -hmm. like one of the first things. And very quickly we figured out we couldn't, couldn't do that on his stat card. Like mm -hmm. very quickly, that was one of the things we figured it's out. It's not right? a thing he does all the time yeah, in the and, comics And either, it does right? tire it's, him out, so. It's a one, it's a one and done thing. Um, and then um, we also, uh, I just wanted a quick, uh, do a new Children of the Atom. This, this is actually a, a pull from one of my favorite comics of all time uh, by the late great Carlos Pacheco, who recently passed away. Um, and it's just one of my favorite pieces, and I just really wanted to have it because it had Nightcrawler on there. Um, and then, uh, and, he, and it's a beautiful piece of art. Um, the art is great. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we won't talk too much about Bishop, but if you know Bishop's storyline from the comics from the 90s when he first shows up, you know that um, he was hunting for a mutant traitor in the X Men. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, we yeah, so you got a little Gambit Bishop action we in there with yeah, the traitor. Yeah, that's right. One of the characters in that card is the traitor. Yeah. You won't guess who it is. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, um, and then we also have one from the from his timeline, mm -hmm. too, that has some interesting characters. It does. They've, the chat's already talking about those characters. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, so let's, let's move on. We've got about 35 minutes left, so I think we're mostly on track. Uh, and let's talk, about, let's talk about this cute little dragon boy, Lockheed. 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 Yeah, Lockheed. Yeah, Lockheed. Look at him. Look how beautiful and he is. Yes. Yeah. It's Lockheed. It <laughs> is Lockheed. He's got a little smile. You know, it's surprising how when you have to do an entire panel like five minutes before you jump on a plane to Gen Con, how sometimes you might get your locks yeah, mixed up. Yeah, you got a little tired. <laughs> I've never claimed to be perfect. I've only claimed to improve. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Iceman and Shadow Cat. Woo! Uh, with Lockheed. <clears throat> with Lockheed. Mm -hmm. uh, Hanging out. So important yeah. to note that this version of Kitty Pride is kind of a younger yep. mm -hmm. uh, version where she's still in the mansion. She's not taken up pirating yet yep. um, from the more modern comics. Yep. So yep. She's not a leader of the Excalibur yet. She's no. learning no. how to phase. She's, she's kind of like, she's she's not necessarily uh, young in her powers, but she's certainly still part, like she's in the middle of the team. Yep. She's still under Wolverine's tutelage, all of that. Yep. Uh, the version of Iceman we've done, not obviously the first class Iceman, more of the 90s Jim Lee era mm -hmm. uh, Iceman, so he has... Pretty good control over his powers. And uh, exciting enough about these characters is that they are both oh, yeah. in that fabulous threat range that everyone loves. Let's take a look at Shadow Cat, though. Talk about her. Talk about her. She was so I difficult. Mean, she phases. She phases. She phases? <laughs> she goes I remember. Punches. I She's remember when we played the initial design, and I got to, we, we dropped it. We, talk, we had our dev meeting. Mm -hmm. I like, gave it to you. We talked about it. We made a couple of changes. I handed it over to Plummer for the very first playtest because he loves Kitty mm -hmm. Pride, mm -hmm. like absolutely loves. Mm -hmm. 
and and we played the game, and I think I just trounced him. And at the end, he was like, I think he's like, I don't even care that I lost. She's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's a very interesting character to create, right? How can you go through things, and mm -hmm. how can you mm -hmm. do things with objectives and yep. tokens and uh, things like that, and, and, and attacks, and, right? And, and, and in an objective-based game, how do you do teleportation and freezing? Yeah. Like, how do yeah. you make that work? And, how do you make Iceman slide on ice in three dimensions? <laughs> you know, like everybody's all, got their challenges, right, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> all kinds yeah. of challenges. <laughs> and I, I remember we talked a lot about like, well, she can kind of like punch people through their armor and mm -hmm. stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. she can face through the armor, mm -hmm. but then punch them and stuff. So like, how can we work that into the design? You, see, you definitely see attacks, right? like a lot of a lot of her abilities were informed by Vision, who was our mm -hmm. first phasing character. So mm -hmm. we took elements. You know, it's always fun to take elements from previous things and put that in. Um, her phase rest ability went through, I think, a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, making her kind of the more defensive protector, like, oh, you're going to get hit, I'll phase you as well. Yeah. That was a neat and fun trick to do with it. Um, and then I know we also talked a lot about, like, should she have wall crawler or mm -hmm. something like that, or flight. Uh, yeah. and, and we ended up not going that direction mm -hmm. because where she can go through things, she can't really go, like, up. Uh -oh. Mm, so sometimes it depends on the later creative on, team. Later and, on, well, she literally walk like, on sure. air, but whatever. All <laughs> powers are kind of mutable based on what the yeah, story requires. Sure, sure. sure. Yeah, but it, it's it's creative. like a. But this version doesn't, and that's. It, it's like a. Well, we okay. Want, well, she does enough already. We gave we her long. We gave her long right, move, which like, kind of represents the fact that yeah. she's largely unhindered. Um, yeah. And and we also really wanted her to fit within that threat three bucket. So, yeah. you know, you you often have to start making like questions about. All right, are you gonna go? Are you gonna go? give her the wall crawler in the flight, which might push her a little bit forward. Yeah. Are you gonna, yeah. what are you gonna adjust later? What fits on the card as well? You notice the card <laughs> is pretty full. And, and adding a flight girl wall crawler means that something else probably has to go or get trimmed. Correct. So you're, you're always kind of looking at that stuff and making decisions. And one of the wonderful things about that is that that's when the tactic cards come in. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can mm -hmm. influence some of that stuff or make some of that stuff uh, through the use of the tactic cards to kind of represent those unique or powerful abilities that they kind of pull out once or twice. Mm -hmm. Margo, real quick, I just want you to talk. Any, any stories about about the sculpts? Anything anything unique about these ones, or I were mean, they kind of like were they just run of the mill after the waterfall? You're like, <laughs> uh, challenge me, well, please. These were, yeah, these were done by uh, Joaquin Palacios, and he did a great job getting the movement. Get, and then, of course, Kevin went and touched it up, touched up Iceman as well to really enhance it. Um, but really, a uh, common th question is that you know, well. Can we make this in a, into clear mm -hmm. plastic? Like mm -hmm. any sort of like water ice effect. Um, the challenge there, though, um, is that when we do that, you have to create an entire other frame mm -hmm. for the pl for the plastic to be shot in mm -hmm. clear. And then on top of that, like then the placing gets tricky because, especially for gluing, because then mm -hmm. clear plastic fogs up. Right. Yeah. And so you end up having to like. Oftentimes, if it's not clear plastic, you usually like putty or do mm -hmm. something to hide a seam. But with clear plastic, you can't really do mm -hmm. any hiding. So yeah. that's what makes it really challenging. And so we opted to just keep mm -hmm. it uh, gray plastic. Traditional. Yeah, yeah, traditional. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, really that I feel also pushes people who really are passionate about the painting. To paint uh, it clear. To paint it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to really push their skills to like, yeah, to make something look like ice. Yeah. You know, like that's a really, that's a painting challenge as mm -hmm. well. And so I feel like that's the next phase in someone's painting journey. And since you set it up so easy, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful segue to the fact that one Dallas Kemp, one of his classes that he's going to be doing is actually showing how to paint ice mm -hmm. and diamond using both Iceman and yeah. Emma Frost. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check that one out, that's going to be later today, I believe. Um, and he's going to cover all of those techniques so you can be ready to paint your own Iceman's mm -hmm. uh, moving forward into the future. All something, right. something that I hadn't considered about yes. clear plastic is not only do you have to have like really good part joins, so there's no gaps. But you also have to hide the po the parts because yeah. you can like see through Iceman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you end up making like so you can the, see pocket, the plug. The you can yeah, see all so the like stuff. It, yeah. it seems incredibly difficult. Yeah, if, so if he, possible at all, he would have to right. have been just flat, boring. Not even an ice slide, probably. Probably the smallest little thing, and to then be like a one piece to be a one piece. One so piece then you sure. don't see any seams, you don't yeah. see any keying. Um, that's that's, that's the challenge. Yeah. All right, Josh, talk to us a little bit about this art. So um, we, again, have to look at the different sort of storylines from the comics history. Um, the card on the very far left, the Fable Companion, is a reference to this really famous Kitty Pride storyline where she's alone in the man mansion and the brood mm -hmm, attack. Mm -hmm. And then we also, the we also um, there's a little reference to Alien oh. in there. Uh, oh, goodness. With the, with the, with the she's in the air duct? And, and be because that, mm -hmm. that story is also mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. alien-like. Um, sure. And then... Uh, of course, we had to have Kitty Pride and Colossus 
teaming up. Messing up a Nimrod, <laughs> specifically. You just had to do it. Uh -huh. um, what did that Nimrod ever do to them? Uh, oh, a lot of things. So oh, many oh, things. Okay. And, and things in the future, like like from the future and different timelines. Like, it's, it's that bad. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's a really famous storyline where Emma Frost helps Iceman unlock his full potential. I'm going to throw that in there. But the one we're showing, the card we're showing, mm -hmm. I think, is one of my favorite things. I even help like play test. Like it's, I, th I think it's like the definitive X Men card, you know. And you that's saying a lot for what we're yeah. covering next. But I believe you. <laughs> that, the, yeah. the, the the art is was, was beautiful. I believe it was owned by uh, Nick Robles. Um, but the rules are very good. Talk about this card. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, I mean. Do you have anything to say about it? I I, I remember it going super personally. well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it does good stuff. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's another one that just is like... The X-Men, as we talked about originally when they came out, one of the big focuses on the X-Men is the idea of teamwork. Mm -hmm. How they work together. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we look at the designs of the characters, we're always thinking about, as a group, what is this character adding? Um, and we want to make sure that each character has a specific weakness that other characters can cover for. Mm -hmm. And then that also kind of transfers back into their team tactic cards, giving them the boost because it's the idea of them working together. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was a fun card. I really enjoyed talking you through the art because I know you had a lot of, like, I remember a lot of, like, Josh consternation about, I don't know what to do for this. And I'm just yeah. like, just show a utopia. Yeah, like, show, what, show what his show dream would be. Like, yeah. Show people doing this. Show people doing that. Like, yeah. show a world at peace and where everyone's, like, together. And so it was a fun, that was a fun little project to work on as well. If there's one guy who's going to mess that up, though, he's next. Oh, and uh, boy. that happens to be yeah. who, Josh? Shadow King. Yeah. What's his real name? Farouk. There you go. Yeah, he's, oh, man. Everyone in the office loved this 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 piece, and I, I'm really happy that uh, they did. He's creepy. Yeah, yeah awesome. I mean, <laughs> the, <laughs> the miniatures on this, super cool. Marco, your team just knocked it out of the park with getting, you know, the Shadow King and Farouk kind of like working together. I know we had to mess a lot with how... The Shadow King's coming out of him to show they're right. conjoined, but different. Um, and then, of course, you know, Professor X. Oh, yeah. Probably not the hardest one we've ever asked for, but definitely one of the most iconic. I would I say it's it. still difficult yeah, like, because of well, the yeah. fact that it's that he's iconic. Like, yeah. there's a lot of expectations, and, like, obviously everyone has their... Like, there's so many versions of Professor mm -hmm. X, like, especially with the new run as well, mm -hmm. that he's not in a wheelchair or, <gasps> yes, or, in, a, or in a floaty chair. But yeah. we wanted to... We've been doing it's, this, this kick of the classic. Definitely the '90s, the like yeah, the yeah. Jim Lee era. So we stuck to that, and yep. we had our own, and got inspired by other previous designs of that chair because mm -hmm. that's a cool, floaty gold chair that he's in. And then there's also like Al Alex, uh, Alex Settinger was mm -hmm. the one who uh, another internal. Yeah, another internal. Shout out, shout, shout out. out to him in our sculpt in our sculpt engineering department. And he uh, this he was so ambitious that he wanted that to be his first sculpt. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, this, so this, is also, this is his very first one, right? Yeah, That's so amazing. he went at full steam ahead. Mm -hmm. He w did iterations. Mm -hmm. You guys picked it apart. We and did. did. We, yeah. I mean, if there's... <laughs> It's amazing how difficult it is to get, you know, generic bald guy to look like the correct yeah. generic bald guy. Mm -hmm. Because there is. Generic bald guy. You have a beard, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. That's, that's how we know. So you have the long beard. I have yeah. the short beard. It's very Pick different. The beautiful elvish eyebrows that he has. <laughs> uh, now, I know everyone wants to see what the, the father, the originator of the yeah. X-Men, brings to the table. Marketing's not going to let us do that, though. So instead, we're going to look at Shadow King. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, yeah. And we got the finger guns from Anover. <laughs> like, that's right. That's mine for later. Uh, but Shadow King, honestly, well, working on Professor X was fun and exciting and whatever. Yeah. I, whatever. 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 You know, all the good words. Shadow King was the one I was excited about. Cause Shadow King ruins your day. Well, he's so weird, right? And he's weird. Like, and we really got to play with the manipulation and the fact that he, like, screws up board control and he does a lot of, like, really mm -hmm. sinister mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Well, we did a lot with convocation, right? And we learned a lot about, like, mm -hmm. how to do these weird mystic -y things. Yeah. And we learned a lot from how that, uh, like, how that worked out for the, the affiliation and things like that. And you can see a lot of that here, right? He's yeah. got the astral token. As astral form was definitely drawn mm -hmm. from the work that you did on astral, mm -hmm. ast astral the astral projection. Ring. Projection? Yeah, the astral yeah. ring. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, what if that was just on a character? And then I turned that over, and you're like, you can't do this. And I was like, we can, but you have to like, you have to make it better. <laughs> yeah, we got to figure it out. So, yeah, when you can do that all the time, it's obviously very powerful, mm -hmm. right? So, like, this character does a lot of interesting things uh, that, is, that are very abnormal. Mm -hmm. And he plays out in, like, this weird kind of mind gamey thing. Yeah. Where he's, he's, yeah. So, all uh, right. I, I do quite like how he came out. Yeah, he was super fun. <laughs> uh, a terror to balance. I know yes. that. I know we that a lot he of iterations. Broke a lot of the game for a and long time, and it was. It's always difficult to do those characters that you want to make your opponent hate because they're yeah. just like, stop it, stop ruining my day. Yeah, no. You have to make that. 
you have to make that feeling also feel good because you can play around it. And right. finding well, that perfect balance <laughs> of solution, like, yeah, right. it yeah. feels like the Shadow King would feel if you were fighting against him, but also, like, it's not oppressive. But he, he's yeah. got to be obnoxious, but yes. not too obnoxious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's a balance. It's a yeah. little bit of like, balance. Uh, uh, all right, so let's talk really quick about the tactic cards that come with these these fine gentlemen. Uh, we showed a couple of them at Adepticon. Mind Wipe, of course, from Fatal Attraction. Mm -hmm. But walk us through walk us through some stuff. Of course, we're going to do a Cerebral card. Of course. Of, I mean, we're not. Uh, I believe the miniature also has that option, right? An option for the helmet. Yeah, yeah. you can swap the have regular bald head, or you can have cerebral. bald head with or the cerebral. Metal, metal yeah. Bald head. yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, of course, we did a, a reference to the infamous uh, mind wipe mm -hmm. that Xavier does to Magneto. Mm -hmm. and that Which might wipe. lead to more crazy oh, things in the future. But you, you, th you think, yeah, it, uh, no, it's yeah, totally and fine. then then go well after after that. Um, it's totally fine. And we we, you know, we we don't we don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> um, and then we got the astral plane because, of course, mm -hmm. um, tracking is you know rules that plane. And I don't know what that card does, but I remember it being pretty good. <laughs> like I remember it being pretty. Uh, it's, exciting. It's, it's nasty, <laughs> much yeah. like Shadow King is nasty. <laughs> 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 I think that might be my favorite tactic card art we've shown oh, so far. Big, right? Yeah. Like I love all the little people down there. Yeah. So big and Professor X just trying to hold hold the fort in yeah. his yeah. little mind bubble. <laughs> yep. Because everyone great. else is like, I don't know why it's we're great. here. <laughs> why are we here? What have you done? <laughs> what have you done, Professor? Uh, and then last but not least, we just wanted to take one moment, show off this picture that I think yeah. has been shown Beautiful before. Photo, yeah. But celebrate uh, honestly like four years of design and developments in sculpting and art. Uh, graphic design, marketing, everything. Like this class of X Men yeah. that really encompasses a lot of the joy and the love we have for the comics mm -hmm. of the time era. Like this one just it makes me a little weepy every time I see it because it's just like childhood come to life. Uh, yep. Amazing to work on and just the culmination of a lot and so much more to come. And it's just yeah. the beginning. I know. This, <laughs> might be, so this might be the end of a Jim Lee era and the start of something else. Who knows? Ooh. Who knows? There's stuff. There's still more Jim Lee stuff. To they do. are. <laughs> we uh, all right, so moving away from things that we've talked about and uh, we're showing it at Upcom, we're going to start moving into some more future-y stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So this is going to be, we're not going to have any card reveals or spoilers for you because this is this is a bit more Way in the future. Yeah. A bit more in the future. Uh, Mojo Ball is going to be a brand new... Uh, game mode? Game mode. Game mode. Uh, that players are going to have the chance to get. It takes the... Marvel Crisis Protocol <laughs> characters throws them into a depraved mojo version of kind of American football Foot or football, rugby. Soccer, yeah, rugby. it's a little bit. It's a little bit football. It's a little mm -hmm. bit rugby. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it totally changes kind of the the overall game style play while keeping a lot yeah. of the familiar elements. You talk a little bit about a tiny bit, just tiny bit more later in a different panel. Yeah. So if you're going to so. tune in for the game modes panel, which is going to include myself, Pagani, and our new Marvel Crisis Protocol developer, Ben Ransom, we're going to be talking uh, a bit more specifics about this, showing some stuff off. Yeah. Just slam the just slam. Just start doing the drums. Just start doing the <laughs> drums. It's fine. Um, so look forward to more information on that. Really fun. We always, I always yeah. love it when we get to do stuff like this because it's just zany and cool. Uh, turns the collection in a different way. Absolutely. So the the the, the ten seconds. Ten seconds. Yeah. Give no me the elevator cards. pitch. Uh huh. There's balls. You got to take them to things to score points. Yeah. There's a playbook to win the game. There's a playbook cards, which are sort of like special tactic cards. So also no normal tactic cards. Yep. Uh, you can pass the ball. You can do, yeah, you kind of do all the sportsy things. You can win or lose. I've never you seen You can win or lose. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> once? Not once. Oh, I'm all into it. We're back into American football season. That's my Sundays. Ooh. Ooh. Um, all right, moving beyond Mojo Ball, which, again, we're going to be talking a lot more about in the game modes mm -hmm. panel. So if you want to learn about all the different game modes, our design and development processes behind that, you should tune in. It's going to be a good time. We have some painted versions uh -oh. of a couple of the Spider-Verse characters that we showed at Adepticon earlier this year. Uh, our own Gwenum and Scarlet yeah. Spider Ben Riley. Gwenum looks great. Now, would you like to would you like to give a shout out to who sculpted this this amazing Ben Riley due to his oh. love and passion for the character? Well, that was still Joaquin Palacios, <laughs> but Kevin Kirk is worked. Oh, on. that's right. He did he did some yeah. work on it. And oh. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Kirk is, is a massive yeah. Ben Riley fan. He's a massive you Ben Riley fan. It's one of yeah. his favorites, really. <laughs> he's he's never loved a character more. Yes. Yeah. He has but. all of the comics on his wall. Absolutely. He, so he believes let, that he's the ultimate version of Spider-Man that was so ever made. So let the record show. Yeah. Kevin online. Kirkus. It's, it's on the internet. internet. It's, it's real. It's real. Mm -hmm. Has Ben Riley ultimate Spider-Man? No. 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 Uh, he's Scarlet Spider. Scarlet Spider. 
but well, wonderful sculpts, great Easter eggs. Um, we threw an Easter egg there that's an option bit, so if you don't want the cool mm -hmm. axe guitar, you can always have it left out. But it does come. Kevin's with already screaming at me through the chat oh, about I, this blatant betrayal. Of trust. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gwen. Gwen was a fun one just from a design. Her costume that is one so is tricky. cool. Yeah, so it's cool. very tricky too because there's just so much going on. Yeah. it's like the whole. And you have to make it read in up. black. Yeah, and you have to from it's a miniature, so you have to be able to see like what is even happening mm -hmm. around here because mm -hmm. it's a large open mouth that acts like yep. the hoodie, yep. and then there's a tongue coming out as well yeah. from in the middle. So and then I know I, so much. I know that Dallas was really keen on getting the the bass guitar axe, the Carnage axe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've so read that, um, Mary Jane read that thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. gets the Carnage uh -huh. symbiote, and then she like mm -hmm. changes her guitar into an axe, a deadly axe. Yep. So it's all there. Uh, these characters. I, I'm really excited. We talked a little bit, but Ben Riley getting to be a clone and getting to play with clone things. So like yeah. all the different bits of Spider-Man and making him kind of a, yep. a pseudo puzzle. Gwenum being similar, right? Where we took yep. Gwenum, we took we took Venom. We were like, what happens when you mash those two flavors together? And how and are they different? Cool. How do they work <laughs> out? Yeah, you get something really amazing. And I'll just say, like uh, this pack has some of my favorite art, especially uh, Gwenum has a card that has my probably my favorite art. I've ever done so far. Oh my. Like, well, literally. I look forward to you talking about that you, more in the future. You'll know when you see it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then of course, <laughs> to, us, to oppose, to oppose uh, our new Spider-Verse characters, we showed these fine, these fine sinister mm. folks off, uh, unpainted, but here it is in all its glory. That's Again, Sandman. an incredible photo shot <laughs> from our fabulous photographers, Matt and Leia. Mm -hmm. um, I love what they did with the truck. Exploded yeah, in the yeah, with, the, with everything, and that's uh, some Rob Hopkins, I think, terrain back there that that makes it all work out and everything. Tony, our own Tony Koncheck, made some of those destroyed crates, yes, mm. he did. Uh, shipping containers and He's stuff. So gifted. He just takes so a good. hammer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, who knows? Yeah, that, that would paint be, him first. That would be Tony. Yeah. That would be Tony for you. Um, but these characters also so excited for them to come out. I know uh, people have been waiting to be able to field the Sinister Six. Sinister Let's get going in there. Uh, now for things that people haven't seen, which, because it's mini stravaganza, instead of just showing you the raw sculpts, we're just jumping right ahead. We're going to go ahead and just show you them all painted in their glory. Yeah. Uh, Josh, go ahead. This is your moment. You know, <laughs> look at him. Look at his smile. <laughs> you get um, the privilege of getting to see. I mean, every day I get to see the characters that I wanted to see for a long time. But Shang Chi was one, I mean, that, I mean, the game, I don't even think it was technically mm -hmm. out yet, and I was like, we need to do Shang-Chi someday. Um, yep. And uh, there he is, and I'm so happy. There he is. And I love him so much. Um, uh, with Silver Sable, yes, that is the Silver Sable. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the sculpts are amazing, the art done by Gary Daniels III is great, and um, we, we just, I mean, all I'll say is, um, we had an amazing time figuring out how to make like, like being the best martial artist in the world a superpower? There, there was a lot of martial arts talk. And the, the names of the abilities alone. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, they're, they're from the comics and from from real martial arts things. And, and uh, you cannot possibly guess what Shang Chi does. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, and, and do like speculate. You don't have no idea what he does. You 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 can't guess it. <laughs> you won't be able to guess it. I mean, it's, it's, I'm just saying it's a good thing we turned the card sideways so that the true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you want to do you want to give him your favorite your favorite name from that card? Uh, you don't tell him what it does. Uh, just give him your give favorite, my favorite name. name. Okay, Gosh, keep your favorite well. name. I'm go ahead. Right. No, 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 no. Uh, Wild Goose leaves, leaves the flock. flock. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is easily the best name on that card. Uh, I don't know. Dragon chases its tail. Is pretty good. Sure. That's that's number two. Number two. Number two. That's fair. That's fair. All right. So. The name of the panel, as some fine, uh, intrepid individuals in the chat have pointed out, is named uh, Mutants, Gods, and Superhumans. Where are the gods? Where are the gods? Where are the gods? Where, where are the gods? Right. No, definitely oh, not yeah. Silver Sable. Oh, no. uh, where are the gods? The gods are coming in with both the thunder and the lightning. Oh, I accidentally. I know. You I completely accidentally. Did you accidentally do that? Yeah, I, I thought you did it on no, purpose. No, I did not. Uh, uh, so we return to Asgard <laughs> uh, with style. Um, and this is, again, we're looking at kind of spring of next year. So no card reveals, no real big discussions, but we are going to see a new, I'll just throw this out there, Threat 6 version of Thor, mm -hmm. Odinson. There he is. Uh, we've got a brand new version of Loki in his classic evil villain form. Of course, we've got the mighty Thor, Jane, Jane Foster, Foster. Yes. Yeah. coming in that hot. Um, a character that we've had on the list for ever, ever and yeah. finally have, have gotten to the opportunity to be able to do it. 
Uh, really Thanks. happy that it actually took this long because I know your team, Marco, has become quite proficient at lightning effects now. At this point, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've learned lessons. <laughs> we From storm to here, is like, it's yeah. a whole journey. So definitely approached the wobbly <laughs> issue <laughs> and we've definitely learned our lessons and iterated now to like really get good at these effects mm -hmm. and studio favorite is lady sif like that 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 sculpt that lady sif sculpt is i mean it looks everyone, amazing yeah. in the picture but when you see it in real life it is maybe the greatest piece of miniature art I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like, it just all works. And it even breaks a lot of the rules that we, that we have. Know. I know. Like, I, Dallas completely, like, like internally was probably was dying. Dying inside. We, like, you can't really see her face. It's obscured by her shoulder. Her sword is high. Like, she's tucked, she's in, tucked in. in. But, it, but it just, it all works, it works to make this amazing, this that amazing energy, piece. Yeah. It's fantastic. This and, was very exciting. Yes, so yeah. shout out to Joaquin Palacios and Javier. Garcia, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they knocked these ones that. out of the park. Uh, I love the motion on Thor. <coughs> we worked really hard on that. Yep. The Loki just looks phenomenal. Like yeah, he's it's great. <laughs> it's just the glory of Loki all in there. Um, this pack, super excited for. Super and back to the for. how do you make a Loki annoying, but not too. Annoying. But not oh, too annoying. <laughs> you got uh, close. <laughs> I, to <laughs> wow, to be fair, to be fair, I think the important bit is is that the Loki that currently is running around Marvel Crisis Protocol, he's a trickster. He's sure. he's mischievous, but he's a lovable scamp. Sure. This Loki. He's just here to steal your lunch money and He's ruin your rude. day. He is not nice at all. There's nothing lovable about this one. I would even say unkind. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I would agree. This isn't mischief anymore. It is mayhem, as Loki is wont to say. That's a rule on the card, actually. It might yeah. be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, to set the stage of your battles, you've seen some of this stuff if you've watched some of our game streams before. Mm -hmm. But these Asgardian characters are going to be coming with their own fabulous Asgardian terrain. Um, this is another project we've been working on for several years now yeah, and one-shot cards. and ago. yes they do include the one-shot cards with them so you can mm -hmm. set the stage for awesome asgardian mm -hmm. battles mm -hmm. um this stuff is just phenomenal like it looks so good on the tabletop it's huge uh, it's the the shrine is really big and then of course you have all the accoutrements to go with it with the destroyed statue and all mm -hmm. of the different signal flares and everything with um, one shot cards. it's quite amazing and uh, also has one-shot cards as well i think there's yeah. actually multiple one-shot cards in these ones as well for a couple of the different elements I believe. I, I don't know. I think these ones only have one each. Do they have one each? So. All right. I don't think we get crazy until we get crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you so got crazy, I to crazy. be fair. I went crazy. <laughs> to be That's fair. For sure. Uh, <laughs> we put eight? No. <laughs> what about 36? <laughs> Why not? It's an event. It's a true event. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> that's kind of wrapping up all of the stuff that we have to look at. Uh, again, kind of moving into spring of next year. Mm -hmm. Lots of cool stuff. There, of course, will be more reveals. Marketing doesn't allow us to show everything. They like to keep some surprises so that you always have a reason to check out the Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, for now X, whatever it's called X. these days. X, formerly Twitter. It'll always be Twitter to me. X is going to yeah. give it to you always through to in a 240 always. characters or less. Is that how it works, Ian? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. uh, it's wild out there. I, look, that's how we do it. It's always wild at Mini Stravaganza because it's live. Uh, and with that, we just want to leave you uh, with one final screen as we say goodbye uh, and good luck. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned for the next, the next panel. The next panel. Of whatever the next panel is. Adieu. Goodbye, everyone. We love you.